Oh, especially if it's a long distance, because the lovers can indicate a long distance relationship sometimes. So if that's your message, hmm, okay, let's see. So the lovers, um, I actually talked about this this morning on Instagram. The lovers, it's the card of love, you know, what do we love? It's card for Gemini. Some of you might be dealing with the Gemini. We have Pisces here and we have fire energy coming up here. Um, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, but... This is the card for Gemini. Why? Because these two represent the two twins. You know, Gemini are the twins. And it's the masculine and the feminine, the yin and the yang, um, the positive and the negative, the dark and the light. Whatever we see is the two, the polarities. But they're not polarities. They make a whole, right? And that's what the thing is. Like, it, they, it always seems to be this perception of distance between ourselves and what we love. And, you know, this is seen as the choice card, the head or heart it's a choice that we make i don't see it as a true choice because there's no real distance between ourselves and what we love because what is love it's that emotion that you have within you the other stuff the possession the you know romance or whatever it is and we can this card can come up for loving what you do it's all it says is are you going to go for what you love are you going to close the distance between yourself and what it is that you love whether that's a person a job or whatever now, yes, this can be a relationship, a romantic relationship at that. But that's what this week's about, about a relationship or about what you love. And, they, you know, there's the perception that there's distance between you and what it is that you love. But it isn't a true... I mean, the thing that stops us is our mind, right? And that's the mind element of this, the head and the heart. Because it's the mind that says, you know, well, should we do this? We're going to get hurt. We're never afraid to love. We're never afraid to love. Because that happens automatically. We can't stop love. You know, you, pff, how many of you have just fallen in love or felt something? For something? You know, you see a little puppy and you're like, oh my God, that's, you just love. You know, that love comes up within you or a person that you meet or a career that you just know that you're going to do it. It doesn't matter what you have to study, what you have to go through. You're, you want that. That's your path. <clears throat> that's love. But it's our mind that comes in and says, well, you can't do that or you're going to get hurt or, you know, blah, blah, blah. And that's not love. That's other stuff that comes in. The emotion of love, that is very pure. So we're never afraid to love. We was afraid of how our love will get treated. Will it be reciprocated? Will we have the object of our love? You know, that that's the other stuff. So that's the kind of stuff that's coming in for you this week as your underlying energy. Now, what do we have at the heart of the reading? We have the three of cups. Keep your vibration high. This is, I always see this as that, you know, even if it's romance that you want, if you're trying to keep, you know, make things work in a relationship, <coughs> excuse me, if you're in a relationship and, you know, things have not been the easiest in that relationship, you can always reconnect as friends. Now, that doesn't mean you kind of, you know what they say, once you kind of bumped uglies in the bedroom, you never go back to holding hands. I don't mean that. It means, you know, with our friends, we'll sit and talk to them. We'll find out what's going on with them. We'll go out for drinks. We'll go out for a meal and we'll sit and talk. We can be in a relationship and we forget that part. We forget to do that part, to connect as people. You know, what's going on in your life? How was your day? That kind of energy. We get into a pattern. We get into a rhythm. And there can be distance between ourselves and someone, even if we live in the same house, right? Now, if this isn't romantic um, for you, Three of Cups is that. It's our friends, it's our family members, it's um, relationships of support, right? Our support network. Why do you need to call on this? Something. Some of you might have been withdrawn, um, held back, not been hanging out with people that love you or that you love even. Maybe you've not felt the support, right? That can happen with the Three of Cups, but that's your focus this week. It's the heart of your reading. You know, who is there for you? What's your support network like? It's fun, guys. There's a, there is a big kind of um, push or need for fun, even if you're in a relationship. And it's strange because Leo got a similar message. Of, of This is just kind of, look, they're just hanging out, having a glass of wine together. And they've got like abundance around them. Look at all this, this, the cornucopia, or, uh, you know, the pumpkin and all this kind of stuff. That's all abundance. That is abundance that they have. And they create that abundance together. So if you're trying to reconnect with someone, do it th as this. You know, at a very core level, it's not about the romance or the rest of that kind of stuff. It's about connecting as people, supporting each other, letting each other know that you're there for that person and you love and support them. Why is that? Well, we have the high priestess coming up as a person. It's just a very passive energy. Someone who 
they can be secretive when this energy comes up. And I'm saying that because we have the moon here and we have the high priestess. Both these cards are very secretive energies. And that's not in a bad way. This could be someone who's just... If they're trying to look at their intuition, trying to figure out what their gut feeling is in a situation, you might have done that. And you kind of go quiet when you're figuring it out. That's the energy of the high priestess. When you're trying to figure out what's going on here. What am I feeling? And it may be to do with your, you know, connections, um, romantic or otherwise. Even if it's work, you know, if this is a work reading for you, although I'm not getting any pentacles or any of that kind of stuff, but the energies are so broad, they can apply to anything, guys. Um, I always think we do ourselves a disservice when we immediately try to lock on to, oh my God, this is romance, right? You know? Yeah, sometimes it's, if every single one of them was like, you know, marriage and all that kind of stuff, sometimes it happens. But in a general reading, we look at the energies of the cards and the energies are pretty broad. They can cover any aspect of our life. And so I kind of feel like this is someone who wasn't saying anything. It's very passive energy. You might have been looking at what your intuition was telling you about this. Someone else could have been doing that. They might, you know, this person may not have felt very supported and that's why there's a connection here. For work, this is about networking, clients, you know, the social aspects of work, going out for drinks after work. If you've been, you know, if you've just been working away by yourself, getting back in connection with what you love. What is it that you love? Because I'm getting the, uh, this kind of sense of distance. There's distance between yourself and what you love or the perception of distance, but it can be closed this week. Yep, this week. Um, we have the moon coming up in the present. And the moon is a card that talks about, you know, it's a card of illumination, but we can't really trust what we're seeing because the moon's not as bright as the sun, right? So if you have a look at the path ahead here, if you can see that. If you look at the path ahead, some of, it's, some of it we can see, but some of it's in shadow, right? So it's not about looking at the path that's revealed to us. It's looking at what isn't revealed. Now you might say, Jay, I don't know what's in the shadows. Yeah, that's truth. You don't know what's in the shadows. However... That little voice in your head, those little fears and doubts will come out and tell you, you know, there's a wild animal there. There's someone waiting to attack me. There's a ditch there. I'm going to hurt myself if I go in the shadows. But you don't actually know that. So you fill the shadow with whatever your fears and doubts are. And that's what this card illuminates. It's the shadow work. It tells you to look in the shadows. Why do you think there's distance in yourself in the person? Why do you feel the way you do about your love? Because you feel love for something or someone. But there's also fears and doubts around this. Why? That's what the moon's asking you to look at. Because ultimately the moon tells you, can you walk this path in faith? Well, can you walk this path in faith? Not knowing what's in the shadows. Because the only way you'll know is if you go up to the shadows and have a look in them. See what actually is there. And again, very intuitive energy. Very intuitive energy. But it may be that you're not listening to your intuition. And you know, sometimes that's when the Three of Cups can come. You know, our friends, they know us better than we know ourselves sometimes. So if you said to them, I really like this person, but I think they don't like me back. And your friends might be like, well, you haven't even said anything to him. How is he going to know? How is he supposed to know that? Or, you know, I really want this or I really want to do that, but I don't think I can, whatever the fears and doubts are. But there is support here for you to get what you want. And then look what happens. We have the Knight of Wands coming up as the future energy. This is about going in a different direction. This is about trying something new. This is about injecting fun back into this. Fun. Because a lot of times, and I get a lot of people that they kind of take about, they're kind of going over things, thinking about things. What are my fears and doubts here? This is not about any of that. This is not about self-work. Once you've acknowledged that the fears are there, how do you overcome them? Well, what this guy does he's about the experience he goes out he's the explorer he's the adventurer he doesn't want to go anywhere he's been before because that would be boring right he's for the he's there for the fun for the excitement the enthusiasm of it what new experience can i find here so for some of you it may be connecting differently with a group of people it may be connecting like this you know um in a different way a more fun way with your partner there is travel. I mean, for some of you, there's no doubt travel because I do see this as a long distance relationship sometimes. And this might be trying to figure out where that relationship's going. And you might even be considering friend zoning the person. But it's like, have you given it a shot? Maybe go and travel and see that person or them come and see you. But we have the Six of Swords coming up as the advice. This is you moving on from something. Maybe it's about moving on from someone who's not 
said what's going on. Maybe that's you, right? Because this guy's exuberant. He's going to say, this is what's happening. This is how I'm feeling. Not even feeling his passions, right? Because if when he gets bored, he just goes off. He's not ready to deal with it. He has a bad reputation, the Knight of Wands or the Prince of Wands here, in that he's seen as unreliable. But would you want someone to stick around and, you know, if they're not feeling it, they're not really supporting you, they don't really love you, but they're just faking it? Because he's pretty real. That's what I like about the Prince of Wands. He's, you know if he's there with you, he's loving every minute of it. He's loving every minute of it. And I'm kind of a bit biased because I've been kind of harnessing his energy for a while now anyway. I love the uh, Knight of Wands. I always think he gets a really bad reputation. So yeah, with the Six of Swords, this is closing the distance between yourself and what you love, right? The love is. Can be an internal journey. It can be getting over a difficult time, whatever that situation has been. But guys, you don't do it alone. That's the main thing of this week. It's hanging out with other people, having some fun. Um, yes, acknowledging maybe that there are fears and doubts about a relationship maybe. Or just that you're never going to be able to get what you love or find love. But keeping your vibration high with this energy and that energy. And you do move on. You move on to something better. That's the Six of Swords. It's harmonious energy. This is very, very interesting to me, whatever went on here. But you'd know it. For each of you, is going to be individual. Someone not talking to you. You're not talking to someone else. You could be learning something new. Maybe you've been away studying or something, right? Because uh, I see that as occult study sometimes. But this, it's about reconnecting now with people, not even with just a person, although that might be how it transpires, but it's reconnecting with people. Consider your foundation. You're being asked to look at how committed you are to love. And that's what the lover says to you. What do you love? Are you going to go for what you love? Are you going to close the distance between yourself and what you love? And not like a job, not like, oh my God, I need to work on this, right? Which is why I'm not seeing the moon as doing like full on shadow work. It's like acknowledging, I don't really know what's in the shadows, but you know what? Let's go charge towards it and go explore it as an adventure to see what the experience is. A leg up. See, this is the same as the three of cups. Whatever it is you're trying to achieve, it's not about doing it alone this week. Can I have a little look, a leg up, right? The little baby polar bears climbing up on his mum this is about you've gone as far as you can on your own now it's time to ask for help ask for support if you need it and the thing is you know a lot of people say oh, i'm never gonna ask anyone because i don't get help or no one's ever there for me but you know why do you have those people in your life then go find people that will be there for you find your tribe find your people that support you i mean that's the thing that astounds me whenever i say to people oh it's time to ask for help first of all people don't want to ask for help because it's a pride thing and if the person says no to them because it's taken them such effort to ask for help. I mean, I had to learn to ask for help in a really, I have no problems, which is one of the reasons I don't like to be told what to do anymore. Because if I need help, I'll be the first person to go and ask for it. And if someone says no to me, I, ne I don't take it personally. I think maybe they can't, right? For whatever reason, they're busy, they don't have it to give or whatever it is that I need help with. If they can't do it, that's fine. I don't take it personally. But it took me getting so ill that I had no, I didn't have physical use of my body to, to be able to overcome this thing of not asking for help, for being that prideful. You know, I'm not going to ask anyone for help. But you guys would help someone else if they came and asked you. It's about giving and receiving Libra. And we have blessed here, which I love this card. The one thing I don't like about in the book when they talk about this card is they say it's an undeserved blessing that you know you don't deserve it. And I think that's bullshit. We always deserve it, right? But I think there might be people that are there for you this week that you never considered. You never considered you'd get help from, support from, you know. And it kind of breathes some life back into you. That's what I'm getting here. Okay, and it says, Dear you, what is true for you? Can you be impeccable with your word? Sure you can. As long as it's not used to manipulate others, the truth can set everyone free. Let go of the results. Let go of your fears. And allow the truth to empower you and others. This will set into motion a kind of change that will be supportive of you and loving and all kinds of prosperous. This is not a time to compromise and hide your truth from others. And I think that's what you've been doing. Passive energy. She hides stuff. Where was I? 
how you treat some others. Whatever it is you want, go for it and be clear in your motives. That's him. Especially with yourself. You'll be so happy you did. This is a time where you will tap into the power to co-create and manifest your best life. Doesn't that feel amazing? And the results? Miraculous. When you tell the truth and ask the same of others, you can learn a lot from life's for lessons and achieve your dreams. Love you always. So it does kind of feel like a time of like secrets. And I don't think, it's not lies. Secrets don't have to be lies. Sometimes we can work in the shadows. We don't want people to... You could be hurting, right? You don't want people to know that you're hurting because you think it makes you feel weak. But if you, it, you're being asked to be empowered by going for what you love. And maybe it's about coming out and telling someone you love them or telling the people that you love, your support network, that, look, guys, I need some backing here or I need some help here or just talking to them about whatever your fears are. They could help you. But I love it. I love this energy because ultimately, look at the advice. It's like moving forward. There is a journey here, whether that's internal or external. And it's a, this kind of beautiful, fun, enthusiastic energy that comes in for you. 